Now that you know all about the LSAT, let me give you some advice to help you get the most out of the time you spend studying for it. The first piece of advice is always study with real LSATs. Never use fake LSAT questions or simulated material and make sure that you do the most recent LSATs too, especially the 10 tests before the test that you're taking because the LSAT often has short-term trends and you'll want to know all of the most recent tricks that they've come up with. Now, old LSATs are called prep tests, and they started numbering them back in June of 1991. That's prep test number one, and there are three that are released each year. So prep test number 81 was released in June of 2017. So if you were taking the LSAT in September of 2017, you'd want to make sure that you definitely did prep test 71 through 81. You'll want to have seen all of the most recent stuff. And you want to do at least 20 or 30 of them. You want to take some of them as full tests, others you'll want to chop up into sections, and still others you'll want to be able to pick particular question types out of. So at LSAT Engine, our course always includes the most recent 50 LSATs. We give you the most recent 12 LSATs as full-length practice tests. We give you the 13 LSATs before that as full-length practice sections. And then the 25 tests before that, this is really cool, we put them in what's called an adaptive quiz pool, and there you can pull out questions of a particular type, or games, or passages of a particular type. But the cool thing about the quiz pool is that it's adaptive difficulty-wise. And so if you're really good at a specific question type, those questions are going to get harder. If you're really struggling with a particular question type, those questions are going to get easier for you. But it's always giving you questions that are right at the cusp of your ability level, making sure that you get the most out of every hour that you spend studying. So the long and short of it is, make sure you do real LSATs. Make sure you do a lot of them at a minimum 20 or 30. You also want to make sure you give yourself plenty of time to get ready for this test. Don't be misled by classroom programs that only last for two months or three months. Those schedules are often that way because it's convenient for the companies hosting the classes, not because it's in the best interest of the students taking them. I would say three months is a hard minimum. You want to study for at least three months, but really you should be guided by your baseline score. And so if you've never taken a practice LSAT, you can go download one for free from LSAC.org and take a practice test under time conditions and see how you do. And if you want your score to go up by 20 points or more, then you're going to need to spend more than three months. If you're trying to get a score increase of like 10 or 11 points from your cold baseline score, you could probably do that in three or four months. But if you're trying to make a more significant improvement than that, if you're trying to go up by 15 or more points, I would say you need to give yourself at least six months. And here's the other thing to keep in mind. The LSAT is twice as important as your GPA and you spend four years on that GPA and thousands of hours studying and hundreds of thousands of dollars, and the LSAT is twice as important, why would you ever sell the LSAT short? You should spend at least three months, and I would always say four to six months. Give yourself at least four to six months to prepare, and if you know you have a big hill to climb, if you want to make a really big improvement, you might want to give yourself six to eight months. It's also important to approach this test with a growth mindset. And if you're not familiar with the difference between a growth mindset and a fixed mindset, the concept of growth mindset was popularized by a psychologist named Carol Dweck. And the growth mindset is acknowledging that your abilities aren't really limited, that your brain is like a muscle, that if you exercise it, it will get stronger. It's basically knowing that you can improve if you work hard. And a fixed mindset is the assumption that all of your abilities are basically set in stone. And when you take a test, it's a reflection of those abilities, but there's really nothing you can do to change those abilities. That's the fixed mindset. And what Carol Dweck has shown is that simply by having a growth mindset, with like high school students, for example, simply knowing that your brain can get better leads to greater improvements in performance. Just this acknowledgement that you can get better helps you get better. And I bring this up because the LSAT is really good at convincing students that they should already be good at it from day one. You see reading comprehension that's similar to reading comprehension you've done before, or paragraphs of text with questions and multiple choice answer. You've seen that format before, and so you mistakenly assume that you should already know how to do this test. And it's not that way at all. In fact, I often say that your first LSAT, your first practice test, is like taking a calculus final on the very first day of your calculus class. Like, there's no way to expect it to go well because you haven't learned any of the underlying calculus skills. And likewise on the LSAT, there's no way to expect your first LSAT to go well because you haven't learned any of the underlying logic. And logic is a subject that really should be taught more often Unless you're taking a philosophy course, you probably haven't seen any formal logic. It shows up a little bit in various high school courses, a little bit in geometry actually. But there's a lot of logic that underlies the LSAT that you need to learn 
before you start holding yourself accountable for producing your best score. And so go into this test acknowledging that there's a lot of underlying stuff that you may not know or that you might not know as well as you think you do and give yourself a chance to improve before you start beating yourself up about your scores. As your studying progresses, you'll want to continuously refocus on low-hanging fruit. You keep asking yourself, what can I study next that will give me the most improvement for the least amount of effort? And one factor in your ability to do this is you've got to track your strengths and weaknesses, and not just with your gut, but either on paper or in a spreadsheet. Or at LSAT Engine, we always keep track of all of the questions that all of our students do, and we also keep track of the most recent ones, because your ability changes over time. So we know like the last 10 or 12, or it actually varies based on the question type, but we know the most recent questions of every type that you've done, and so we can tell you what you're good at and what you're bad at, but that's only one factor in determining where the low-hanging fruit is. You also need to know how popular that question is, because you might be really bad at a particular question type, but if that type never shows up, then it's not really a big deal. But if it's the most common question type on the test, then it's a much bigger deal. So you need to pay attention to question types that show up more often. We actually have a patent pending review list where we have an algorithm that essentially considers your strengths and weaknesses on all the question types, but also how common those question types are and how many of them you've done so far, because if you haven't practiced very much, then all things equal you probably have more room for improvement there. But whether you do it automatically through a system like ours or whether you do it manually through a spreadsheet, you need to know which question types you're struggling with, which question types you excel at, and also take into consideration how popular those question types are. Finally, you wanna try and take a lesson away from each mistake that you make, and it helps if you try and do it as soon as possible. So every time you take a quiz or a section, inevitably you're gonna miss some problems. And so for every question that you miss on that quiz, you wanna get in there and understand why the right answer is right and why the wrong answers are wrong, but then you wanna ask yourself, what am I gonna do differently next time so that I'll be less likely to miss a problem like this? And that's the real value of that mistake. That's the lesson that you're gonna take away from it, the change that you're going to make in your process. There's a quote that's often misattributed to Einstein. It goes something like, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And that's particularly applicable to the LSAT. I see students miss questions, but then apply the same process over and over again to future questions, which they will then miss or, or fall into the same traps on. And so every time you make a mistake, it should lead to an adjustment, something that you're gonna do differently next time to make yourself less likely to fall into that trap or to make that mistake. And the reason I mention ASAP or the reason I say do it as soon as possible is because if you review a quiz three days later, you'll often forget why you liked the wrong answer in the first place. And if you don't know what attracted you to the wrong answer, then you can't get out of that. You can't change that bad habit, and so you're just as likely to fall into that trap again the next time. So remembering why you liked wrong answers is a really important part of taking a lesson away from your mistakes. That's why at LSAT Engine, we have video explanations for every single problem that you'll ever do so immediately, as soon as you make a mistake, as soon as you miss a question, you can be presented with an explanation video that's gonna tell you why the right answer is right, but more importantly, why all of the wrong answers are wrong, and hopefully that'll help steer you towards the lesson that you can take away from that mistake. But regardless of how you prepare, it's really important to get to the bottom of all of your mistakes and try and turn them into lessons. If you have any questions about this advice or any questions about the LSAT at all, feel free to email me. My email address is justin at lsatengine.com and I wish you the best of luck on test day.